All right, here is the next video. I came across a Zenith 6S128 on the marketplace in very rough condition, cabinet-wise. Well, everything-wise, actually. Veneers coming up there, or on the top, on the side. I don't know what happened through its life to get to this point, but damn. Um, I've been wanting this model for a while. It is big. It is a big tombstone radio. Uh, grill cloth, totally done. It's holes in the speaker. But it has all the knobs. Face plate looks good. Now here is the fun part, is the back. So yeah, we got veneer coming up here, down there. It's just, this cabinet needs a lot of love. Like, what even is this? Like, how, what condition did the rubber need to be in to get to this point? And look, you can even see in there, the wires are just touching, it's just shorted. It's just a shorted power cable. I mean, not that I would plug this in. So the cabinet, it's very filthy. crumbling wires especially see that right here and we got a broken wafer for I think it's the sensitivity or the uh, base to treble wafer so maybe I can glue these back and maybe this pin or like the slider right there Maybe I can find that. Maybe it's somewhere here in the chassis or somewhere in the cabinet. But here, I'll make sure that this doesn't get plugged in. There we go. Now no one is tempted. This is brutal. Like that is insane. I got off the marketplace for pretty cheap. And I've worked on a similar Zenith in my other video. Um, I guess it has had some work done to it because these tubes were replaced with the, uh, the black ones. I'm not sure what they, I forget what they're called. It's missing the gold tube shields that would go around the glass tubes. I'm not sure if these need them. Um, I have to look into that uh, to reduce interference. Uh, dial string is missing i i really am curious as to what's going on under here but i intend to do a complete restoration on this set get it working good redo the cabinet and it looks like most of the original finish has already been taken off i don't i really wish i knew what happened to it for it to get to this point, uh, I don't really want to turn any of the pots and wreck any of them if they're rusted on the inside. I'm not, I don't know. I'm surprised that this has lasted. No, oh, yeah. Crack in the dial, or not dial, crack in the, in the tuning knob. So I'm sure I can glue that and clamp it together possibly just to make it look good again but yeah this is gonna be an insane project but yeah the i mean i've seen these restored they're just beautiful and i i really want to make this like new again give it a second chance at life you know there are guys out there that have been doing this their whole life know a lot more than I do, but you know, every video I learn more. So let's go through this together. All right, we're gonna start taking this apart. So we'll start by just removing all the knobs here. Let's 
son of a bitch. So I still think the chassis is, might have a screw in the bottom. I'm not sure. It seems very loose. Got to get this uh, speaker connection out. And I don't want to pull on the wires. There we go. Cody, get out of there. This is one filthy chassis, dude. Holy mackerel. this just come from? Yeah, I don't know where that just came from. Uh, maybe up here because it didn't have a screw so it propped up the chassis. Yeah, the bottom of this is just a disaster. And it looks like they made some wax formations to replicate what the screw goes into. Uh, to hold the chassis down? Why is there so much wax in here? Hardened to the, ch to the cabinet. All right, I'm gonna vacuum this out. Okay. That's a bit better. I mean, I gotta scrape that wax out. Or whatever this is. I don't know why they did that. That is gross. I'll bring the cabinet out of the shop. We'll get the chassis up here looked at. All right, as you can see, this cabinet is just... Ah, I keep mixing up cabinet and chassis. This chassis is insane. Just dust in everything. I think this is the dustiest chassis I've ever seen from a radio. I really wonder where this set came from, what its history was. And you can see on this dial, there's just, there's no um, little wafer metal thing on the back. So it's, I, it's not like I can just connect these back or glue these back. I need to find out where that was. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to find it though. Okay. Um. Next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and clip this power cord out of here. Um, I like saving the uh, plug, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just clip it, save the plug, throw this disaster away. All right, now let's I'm gonna, let's vacuum the top and then we'll look under. All right, I just fucked up. I knocked it with the vacuum cleaner and that just broke right off. Let's go ahead and look under the chassis. I wonder how well this is going to clean up, because we got the the gold color over here, but it looks like this got some, some damage to it. Not damage, but I don't know what condition this was in. Alright, it looks semi-decent. Got some cobwebs. Do have a replacement electrolytic here. That's been taken out of commission. There is another electrolytic right here. That looks like it blew open. Um, that one down there. I guess this was their power cord cable coming in. That's their fix. That's just, what a mess. Right, I'm just going to vacuum in here, get some dust out. Be careful this time. All 
Okay. Next step, I think I want to check, is... Okay, so this glass front does look good. And it, it is a shame that that chipped off, but, you know, it, it, when it's in the cabinet, it won't be too noticeable. I am going to glue it back, of course, but, you know, that's just... Ugh, I hate that. That's... I hate making mistakes like that. Ugh, I should have been more careful. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like to get the tuner out and give it a complete scrub down. I mean, this isn't even isn't even properly put in there. It's just, what do they just wrap it around? And what, what is, like, I'm just finding these, like, little wax pieces just all over every, did they use wax uh, instead of electrical tape? <laughs> that just seems so strange to do that. All right, so for anyone who's watched my previous videos, what I like to do is just to clean off all of the tubes, just make them look nice and you know, presentable again. I think it makes me feel confident also about the project once all the tubes are clean. Like if the whole chassis is clean, even though we have, you know, the broken wafer, it does make me feel more confident. Like, all right, we're, we're making progress. This, is, this definitely looks better than where we started, I guess is what I'm saying. So this is part of that process, you know, just going through, you know, cleaning the tubes, making sure you can actually see through them again get all the dust off and you know that's just you know, just part of part of my process personally so I took the can one of the IF cans out look at that difference <laughs> in the color in the chassis that's insane okay so I replaced the very crumbly cable that was coming out of the IF can now, I need to replace this one that goes to that lug. I took the glass off. I want to put it somewhere safe just to really be sure not to F this up. So I'm going to clean this uh, very carefully and then wrap it in some towels and put it off to the side. Okay, I didn't know both my cats were up there. All right, last update for at least for tonight. I replaced the power cable with a nice uh, clothed cable. And I replaced the electrolytic with a 22 microfarad at 450. Still need to replace that one. And I looked at the schematic. There's three cables going to it. And I looked and it consisted of two eight microfarad at, you know, 300 to 350. So I got some 10 at 450 to replace that can there. And especially cause that is just cracking out the bottom. All right, so I took out this electrolytic can cause it didn't have any uh, markings on it. And it, this literally just popped out once I got it off the chassis perfectly, well, not perfectly, but preserved in the tube. Um, so I was hoping to get a consensus on which one of these is the ground, and I'm gonna guess that it's the odd color out. So, looks like we got two darker ones and one light. And that is how I'm gonna decipher that. So we got the, I guess the negative terminal or negative here and then we have this one for one of the positive of the electrolytics and where's the other one here's the other one up here uh i'm curious i let me go ahead and actually test this <laughs> yeah i didn't expect really anything but on both of them yeah they're just testing you know nothing so all right okay i was actually incorrect um the odd color out was not the ground so i have put in a terminal strip for those two capacitors and this one green wire or blue whatever color it started out to be is going to here on this resistor strip and on the schematic 
here are the two capacitors, C25, C25, and they both go to that point right there. And then the positives up here, and then the other positive up there. And this is that other electrolytic I replaced last night. So yeah, this is correct. So we got it, we got a good electrolytics replaced. Um, I'm gonna keep going ahead and replacing the other capacitors. Okay, here we go. I replaced the electrolytics. I reached out on antique radio forums and apparently I was asking basically, hey, how should these be hooked up? Like how can I bridge these wires to get the normal tone on the, um, uh, where is it? Yeah, right there, just the normal tone. And they said, you should be able to just get the normal tone right here without bridging anything. And I was like, oh wow, so I'll still get a sound coming through even with these, you know, as they are. And they said, yeah, you should. And I was like, all right. So we're gonna test that theory. Uh, I got this put back into um, the can here. And I also got this hooked up to the tuner. Uh, I have not taken out the tuner. This is basically just a test warm up to make sure everything's going well. Uh, the glass is off the front. I have it put under here in some cloth to make sure it doesn't break. Um, speaker is hooked back up into the chassis. We got the new power cable going into a dim bulb tester, which is then plugged into my Variac, which then goes to a watt meter. But we also have a voltmeter here to show how many volts are going through. I got a 60 watt light bulb. Make sure everything is safe, good to go. All right, now let's let's give this a power up. I'm going to put it to max volume just to make sure we're able to hear it. Um, I I got a new uh, uh, tuner belt that is on the way. I'll link his website in the description. I've used him many times for new tuner belts. It's made of a new plastic and it works great. I'm just gonna use just this right now to tune into, you know, whatever station I wanna go to. Should be fine for the time being. All right, let's get this going. All right, radio's turned on. Current limiter light bulb in, Variac. All right, watts are dropping. That is a great sign. Okay, we, I don't know if that's just the color of it. It may be getting filament. Light bulb was lighting up, but it's not very bright. So I guess there's no shorts in it, which is a great sign. All right, now it's a little bit brighter. 61 volts is what the radio is getting. We're at 23 watts. Oh, I think I heard something. All right, I'm at 120 volts, but it looks like the uh, bulb is taking a lot of that. So only 66 volts are going to the to the radio here. All right, you know what? I'm gonna put in a uh, higher watt light bulb. So we got 200 watt here. Let's see how that works out for us. was
what they can read and not read. It just it is not in their curriculum. It is not in their skill set. All right. There's a lot of jobs they're supposed to do that they should probably. So we do have a station coming through. But we got a lot of interference. So I'm wondering if that has to do with the no tube shields on the IF tubes. No way. So I attach an antenna and I also put the ground to that other lug on the back. Wow. Oh, no more vibrating from the speaker. How about that, huh? Or read any of his quotes, you will know that it seems like Bill Maher has become a little bit more logical. That's not what's happened. What's happened is the party has gone, his party has gone so far left that even he now seems to be more moderate when he hasn't changed any of his positions. Now we'll get Neil McCabe's take on that. Let's see, what are we at, local? But we have a clip of Bill Maher talking about Chicago, and I'll set this up quickly. You had Lori Lightfoot step out. Oh, yeah. Now, Look at that dial. Whew. That is Chicago. beautiful. We have been giving you the deaf numbers in Chicago for over a decade and uh, nearly a decade and a half on this show. We've covered tens of thousands of killings in Chicago. And we beg you the question every single weekend, why won't they do anything? Because it's agenda-driven. They don't care. As if, where have you been for the last 15 years? Well, there's an agenda behind that. Here's what Bill Maher had to say. Let's play the clip, Greg, if we would, please. Let's play the clip. Chicago. Like, most of the, the shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's clear. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. But we'll focus on Chicago because Bill Maher focused on that way. Okay, so... All right, when I let go of the tuner... It falls apart because, I mean, the weight is bringing down the tuner. So we'll go ahead and shut it off. The radio works. How about that? And it was looking rough. And that was only at 106 volts. So we'll go ahead and shut that off. Shut the variac off. Wow. Okay. So I do have... Um, tuner support lugs to come in so this isn't so you know wobbly i mean that's just insane this is very exciting i i'm so glad it, that it works and all i did w so far was replace the electrolytics in one capacitor one waxy capacitor so this is running off of basically all original wax zenith capacitors I mean, that's just amazing. Imagine something built today that in 90 years you turn on and it works. I mean, that's just, I just feel like that's not gonna happen. Zenith stuff was just made to work. And hell did it work. I mean, even though the electrolytics are completely dead, I mean, just having one problem in the power supply and the radio works, after 90 years, are you kidding me? Next step, I guess, is to wait. I, I purchased um, chassis support cushions f for the cabinet. So basically those holes that the screw goes through, there's like a, a little, you know, circular disc that goes in there and it, you know, lifts up the chassis a little bit. So it fits in all the holes because the original original ones are have deteriorated. Um, so there's a coming in. New uh, tuner dial string is coming in. Uh, what else? What else do I need to say? I guess next step is to wait for those to come in. Replace the rest of the capacitors in the chassis. Take the speaker out, clean that up. And I guess we can get started on the cabinet. All right, here's a better view of the cabinet. I got a feeling this original finish is gonna come off like butter.
So it looks like the top does have some water damage right here. Um, the actual wood looks fine right here. I'm wondering how much better it'll look if I sand it down a little bit, but you can tell water has just been in this veneer. All right, that made a world of a difference actually sanding the top with not too low of a grit. Uh, still have some ways to go. Looks like these are some black water stains. I might do some more sanding. Uh, I might wipe this down with just a damp paper towel to see how bad those stains are. And if I really can't get them out, I'll have to use some um, some wood bleach to sort of just take it out. All right, so I'm wrapping up for the day. <clears throat> so this is a huge improvement from where we left off yesterday. So I sanded down, ba or I basically got the finish off of all the sides. Still need to sand down a bit more. It looks like, it looks like someone put a stain on the two sides here because no other part of the radio looks like that. That's just strange to me. I'm one, I'm, I wonder why they stick out so much like that. So yeah, I still have a lot of work to do on the cabinet and especially to glue down these spots and putting that off. Um, <clears throat> but hey, things are looking up. This is going to turn out to be one beautiful radio. So here's a little update. I'm holding the tuner in place so it gets a station. I'm still waiting on the, uh, I think it came in today. I just got to go pick it up. I'm bridging the two tones here to get uh, more trouble. And there was a resistor off the 6F6 tube that I saw had been replaced with a 470k ohm when it should have been a 990k ohm. Um, so <laughs> that was the only resistor I had to replace and it, it sounds a lot better because it was very distorted. It sounded fine at 90 volts, but once I went up to 120, it got very distorted. And now I'm at a bat about 120 volts and it sounded a lot better. Okay, so let me show you. So here was the resistor I was looking at that had been replaced, this R2 off the 6F6 tube. And then I went over to here, R2, and I couldn't figure out what that first number was, but it is 990, but I wanted a, a second opinion so I got the price list and then matched it with the part number, which was 293 right there. So go down, it's uh, 63, 293, right there, 990. And I don't know why they used to have M instead of K, because right under it you see 990 ohms. Uh, but the M is actually just K, because uh, it's definitely not 990 million ohms. So yeah, radio sounds great. I believe that sort of finishes the electronic part of this restoration. I might bridge these uh, just so I have constant uh, high treble, because the, the bass with the way the speaker looks right now I, I don't want the speaker to be rattling. I'm gonna try to recone the speaker as best as I can, or I guess just fix it as best as I can. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind the high trouble. It sort of fits in with the old radio aesthet aesthetic. All right, so I got the tuning shaft off to put in the new um, dial string, the replica. 
And at this time, I'm also gonna take off these rivets, not rivets, these supports for the tuner. All right, why is that blinking? Take those off, put on some tuner supports, and right now, I need to clean this. I'm just gonna clean it just because it's a disaster right now. Trinity right there. All right. Okay. All right, got it working. And I got the grommets from Home Depot, actually. I uh, can't really see them right there. I'll show it when I go under the chassis again, but this little fabric here was really coming apart, so I wanted to put the glass back on to prevent it from degrading any further. But, you know, I think it was ready to go back on. And yeah, I think it sounds better with the treble, with the treble connected. Um, man, this is so pretty. I cannot wait to get the, uh, the cabinet done. It's just going to be a little bit of a long process. And then fixing this speaker is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to look into uh, speaker repair. Um, I might just use silicone on the speaker to connect it back so it doesn't rattle. I know some people don't like that, but I, I've had success with it in the past, so I think I might do that, do that again. All right, so we got some classic black wood stain here. I'm going to be getting this, these parts up here, as well as the uh, speaker grill cloth protectors. And then, after that, we'll flip it over and get the feet all the way around. All right, it's time to put a shellac finish on it. I know there are much better professionals that do this better, better than I do, but for the time being, this is, the, this is what I'm working with. So we'll see how it comes out. All right, this is after the first coat. So it's looking pretty good from afar. Um, but you know, once you get up close, you start to notice the, you know, the not so perfect parts. You know, that black water stain. Um, but the knob that goes there should cover that. You know, again, I'm not a master, but this is definitely a huge improvement from when I found it. So, I am happy. I, I think this will look really good. And you know, hopefully I get better at this type of stuff in the future. Because these are, these are works of art. And you know, who knows, maybe sometime in a few years I, I'll want to refinish this again. When I have, you know, the, the tools to actually replace veneer. You know, I'm just in a, you know, two bedroom apartment so limited space but this needed to get some love Well, it is done. And this is just a normal station on, on AM radio. How about that? So yeah, real cloth in, chassis put back in the cabinet. 
might do some touch-ups on these knobs, but other than that, we are complete. What a transformation that is. Cody, what you see? Got the chassis back in there. Everything looking good. Hopefully they don't scratch the top. I think he just wants to look out the window. There we go. Look at that, man. This chassis, or this uh, this radio is just beautiful. Let's, let's get the volume back up. I mean, that's all I got here, everybody. This is a, a beautiful radio that will get lots of use. It's not a perfect cabinet, but it is a perfect radio. This design is just beautiful, and I'm so glad that I was able to get this model. So yeah, this is just another addition to my collection. I'm excited to send the original owner, or I guess not the original, but the person who sold me this set, a before and after picture. I, get the, I bet they'll get some joy out of um, seeing this restored to how it was. Thank you, everybody. I will see you in the next video.